Hi guys and welcome back to another video. You might have heard of the term TFSA and are wondering what it's all about and why you should even consider opening one. Having a TFSA personally helped me to stay disciplined in saving and investing and I'll tell you more about that in this video. Let's talk about what a TFSA actually is, what the main benefits for your financial journey are, how to open one and also who exactly can open a TFSA and very importantly how much money you can actually put into it because yes there there are certain limits. Just to give you some context, let us look at a higher level first. In Canada, there are many different savings and pension plans, as you can see here. There's the RSP or the Registered Retirement Savings Plan. I already made a video about that earlier. There's the TFSA, which we're going to talk about today. There's the First Home Savings Account below here and many others. But today we're only going to talk about the TFSA. So what is actually a TFSA? A TFSA is a tax-free savings account. And you can read up everything I'm saying, by the way, on the official canada.ca website. So the TFSA or the tax-free savings account is a way for individuals who are 18 and older to set money aside tax-free throughout their lifetime. Contributions to a TFSA are not deductible for income taxes. So let's break this down. What does it mean that you can set money aside tax-free? It basically means that when you put money into your TFSA and that money grows and you earn income, which can be in the form of either investment income or capital gains, this income growth is tax-free, even if it is withdrawn. So you do not pay any taxes on that income or capital gain, which is awesome. But unlike the RSP, where your contributions that you make to, to your RSP can be tax deductible, your contributions that you make to your TFSA are not tax deductible, meaning that the amount of money that you put into your TFSA does not reduce your taxable income. So if you, let's say, earn $80,000 and of that $80,000, you put $5,000 into your TFSA, you still need to pay taxes on the whole $80,000. So talking about income, right now you might be asking, what do you mean by earning income in your TFSA? How do I earn income and how much can I earn? It's actually pretty simple. If you're an employee and you earn an income, let's say $80,000, that $80,000 is taxed. From that money that is already taxed, you can decide to contribute a certain amount to your TFSA. Let's just say $500. And that $500 in your TFSA, you further invest into an investment product because likely you wouldn't want to just let the money lie around in your TFSA because the whole point of opening a TFSA is to take advantage of those tax benefits. So you invest that $500 into investment products, let's say shares, but it could also be a GIC, a mutual fund, corporate or government bonds, and so on. So there's a range of investment products you can invest invest into, which is also called qualified investment. So you've invested $500 into shares and over the course of one year, the value of these shares grows to let's say $700. And then let's say you decide to sell the shares. When you sell the shares, you have realized a capital gain of $200. You made a profit of $200. Let's also say that over the course of this one year, you've earned dividends. Let's just say $15 dividends from your shares. So your total profit is that $200 capital gain plus $15 from your dividends equals $215. So now this is the great thing about having your money in your TFSA. That profit, that $215 is not taxed. Even if you withdraw it, even if you take it out of the TFSA, it is not taxed for the simple reason that your money had already been taxed before it got into your TFSA. So in summary, whether you earn any money or no money at all, or a lot of money in your TFSA totally depends on how you invest your money that you have in your TFSA into different investment products. And this is a very important concept to understand. Similar to the RSP, the TFSA itself is not an investment product, but rather you could look at it like a sort of a pot in which you can put money into and to which certain rules apply, which in this case is tax benefits. And also, if you open what's called a self-directed TFSA, 
you yourself can choose exactly what you want to invest your money into. You can decide how you want to split up your money into your TFSA and make all of your investment decisions yourself. Now let's go on to the benefits of opening a TFSA. So why would you consider opening a TFSA and how would you benefit from it? This blog on manulife.ca explains it pretty well. The first benefit is that there is no tax on earnings as I described earlier. Any income, including capital gains and dividends you earn in a TFSA are yours. You won't be taxed on what you earn. As comparison, if you didn't put that money, let's say $500 into TFSA, but then just took that $500 and invested it into an investment product. And if you then earned any income, for example, capital gain or dividends, that income will be taxed. So that's the awesome thing about investing your money within a TFSA because there will be no taxes that will reduce your profit. You can keep it all. The second benefit of having a TFSA is that there are no penalties for withdrawals. You can take your money out whenever you need it. Of course, subject to the type of investment you've made, which is good if you need access to your money more quickly. Plus, any withdrawals will be added back to your contribution room in the following year. So this makes it very, very flexible, especially for people who have shorter term saving goals. You might want to invest the money, but you may not want to keep it until retirement, as is oftentimes the case with an RSP. And perhaps you just want to invest it for one or two years. And by putting it into a TFSA, you're very flexible because you can just take it out anytime you want. And as mentioned in the second point here, if you take money out of your TFSA, let's say $1,000, your contribution room is automatically replenished but we'll talk more about the contribution room later the third benefit is that you can carry it over year to year any unused contribution room can be used in future years so every year you are eligible for a certain contribution room so the maximum limit you can contribute to your tfsa but if you did not use that contribution room in a certain year you can add it on to the next year so you will not lose that contribution room the fourth benefit of opening a tfsa is or advantage rather that there is no upper age limit on contributions you can keep contributing well into your 70s and 80s unlike your rsp and the fifth and last benefit also important is that it won't impact federal income tested benefits anything you earn or withdraw from your tfsa isn't taxable and won't impact old age security the guaranteed income supplement or the canada child tax benefit i think that there is actually another benefit it's not specific to the tfsa it can also apply to the rsb or fhsa which is that saving your money in these kinds of saving and pension plans helps you to become more disciplined because you know that you get these tax benefits, it can motivate you to save more. At least that's what happened to me, to us. But before we continue to talk about how you can open a TFSA and who is eligible to open one, I really need to tell you about this awesome credit card, the Neo Secured Credit Card. And this will be especially interesting to those of you who are new here in Canada and do not have any Canadian credit history or have challenges in getting a regular credit card. Neo is a Canadian financial institution which is 100% digital and they have this great product in the Neo Secured Credit Card. It's like a normal credit card. The only difference is that your credit limit is based on what's called your security funds. If, for example, you set aside $500 as your security funds with them, your credit limit will be $500. And you can start with as little as just $50, which makes this card even more accessible. Even as a newcomer, you can immediately apply for Neo's secured credit card because approval is guaranteed. No waiting until you reach a certain income level. NEO also doesn't require a credit check, so it doesn't matter if you don't have prior Canadian credit history, although you do need to be a Canadian resident and have a Canadian ID. Another great thing, there are no monthly or annual fees. Why would you ever pay annual fees for a credit card? And you can also earn an average cashback of 5% at over 10,000 NEO partners across the country. You will get $25 as a sign up bonus if you sign up for NEO secured credit card using my affiliate link in the descriptions below. In addition to that, you'll also get three months of NEO premium for free, which allows you to earn even more cashback. So thank you, Neo, for sponsoring a portion of this video. Now let's go on and talk about how you can open a TFSA and also who is eligible to do so. Any individual that is a resident of Canada 
who has a valid SIN and who is 18 years of age or older is eligible to open a TFSA. So here what's really important to note is that you need to be a resident of Canada. But what if you're not a resident? Is there still a way to open a TFSA in that case? Any individual that is a non-resident of Canada but who has a valid SIN and who is of 18 years of age or older is also eligible to open a TFSA. However, however, any contributions made while being a non-resident will be subject to 1% tax for each month the contribution stays in the account. So in case you're a newcomer to Canada, it's very important to know your resident status, whether or not you're a resident. I will not go into further details, but if you're curious to find out more, you can click on this link here to find out whether or not you are categorized as a resident or not. Now let's talk about how you can open a TFSA and it's super, super simple. There are only two steps. To open a TFSA, you must first contact your financial institution or it could be a credit union or insurance company. So this is what is called the issuer. Most likely your bank, but can, could also be other platforms. I, for example, use Wealth Simple for my TFSA. After that, provide the issuer with your SIN and your date of birth so the issuer can register your qualifying arrangement as, TSA, as a TFSA. So can you have more than one TFSA account? The answer is yes. Similar to the RSP, you can also have more than one TFSA at any given time. But the total amount that you contribute to your TFSA cannot be more than your total contribution room. So your contribution room is fixed, but it doesn't matter into how many TFSA accounts you want to split that. So now let's answer the very important question. What is the limit? How much money can you actually put into your TFSA? So let's talk about contribution limits. So here's one awesome thing about the TFSA. You do not need to have earned any income to contribute to a TFSA. So your contribution room or the limit to which you can contribute money into your TFSA is not at all dependent on your income because each year the government actually announces the contribution room for that year and it doesn't change based on your income. So this table over here shows the annual TFSA dollar limit. For example, from 2009 to 2012, the limit was $5,000 and so on. And this year in 2023, the limit is $6,500. So if you were 18 years or older in 2009, so this year here, your contribution room grows every year. In that case, you just add up these numbers. You do not need to do the math yourself. You can simply log into your MyCRA account and you can look up your contribution room there. So guys, as I mentioned earlier, the great thing about the TFSA is that you can roll over these amounts. So if you were 18 in the year of uh, 2009 and you did not contribute, let's say until uh, now, you now you can add up all these contribution rooms and you will be able to contribute up to that amount. Um, you, because you can just carry it forward. But in any case, make sure that in any year you do not exceed your eligible contribution room because if you do that, a penalty might apply. So here it says deliberate over contribution, a contribution that an individual makes to the TFSA that results in or increases an excess TFSA account, blah, 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 could result in liability for a penalty or a tax. So here's an example uh, on TurboTax. Carl had $6,000 in his TFSA account in 2010, but he did not contribute to his TFSA in 2011, but he withdrew 1,000 in 2011 from his account. So 6,000 in and 1,000 out. His unused contribution room for 2020 will be calculated as follows. So we're assuming that we're in year 2020 now. Carl's unused contribution room at the beginning of 2020 equals, let's just go to the numbers, $69,500. This is simply just adding up all the amounts I showed you earlier, minus 6,000, which is what he contributed in 2010, plus 1,000 because he withdrew $1,000 from his TFSA that replenished the $1,000 into his contribution room equals $64,500. So that is the contribution limit to which he can still put money 
in his TFSA. So there you have it. That's the TFSA and the benefits. And earlier I made a video about the RSP in case you haven't watched that yet. You can also watch that next. So what's the difference between TFSA and RSP? I guess that's a video for another time. I hope this was useful guys. Let me know. Did you enjoy this video? Was it too basic? Was it too much information? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching as always and see you soon in the next video. Bye.